Hello everyone, this is Mr. Simple Majority and welcome to Simple Plays. So, I just started the series and now I'm starting it again. Why? 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 Can't you ever just get it done right? Actually, I was up to, I think, about the 16th or 17th episode and I was really focusing on Chromaticraft. Doing really good until I hit a certain spot. And when I hit that spot, that was the end of it. Um, it was the, what was it, the progress is called broadcasting. And for some reason, when I did Lumen Harnessing, I think, this is the only thing left uh, that could be what was connected to broadcasting. But when I did that one, the game did not register it. And... I haven't actually been back to the forums to see if Reka had posted anything on it, but it gave me a unique opportunity because I was actually kind of re going back through my videos that I'd done, and I started noticing a trend. I was basically giving everybody everything in Chromaticraft, and that really goes against what Reka has laid out for this mod. It's a game, it's a mod of exploration and experimentation. And I was basically showing everybody, you know, this is where this is, this is how you do this, and oh, this is how you get this one. And it was just getting too spoily for my per taste. In fact, I actually created a spoiler at the beginning of this playlist because of that. Um, and there are, will be spoilers. I will say that. And uh, probably when we're working with chromatic aircraft, I'll open up with, you know, be aware that this may contain some spoilers. And if you don't want to watch it, skip to the next episode type thing. We're not going to be doing chromatic aircraft today. But I did decide I'm not going to do any of the exploration stuff on camera. I'm going to leave that to you guys to find the burrows, the hollows, the temples, and so forth. Um, I will te give you teasers and tips on how to do some things and so forth. And we will be do making stuff on camera. We'll probably build a lumen fence and a few other, a lot of other things. But the exploration part and unlocking progress, I'm going to leave that to you guys. Because that's where the fun in this mod really is. Well, that and it's just beautifully done. So... <clears throat> That was one. Number two is the that I've really enjoyed with Chromaticraft. I wanted to expand on Chromaticraft, not just Chromaticraft, but go into more of Reka's mods. So we've added in. Let's see here. We'll kind of walk through the area in a minute, but we've added in three extra mods. We have Rotary Craft. Electrocraft and Reactor Craft. Now, these we'll definitely be covering a lot of because he has given us a quite amazing amount of notes and information. This is your wiki, and you get these books when you start up. So you can go into basic terms and learn the basic terms and what an NM is, or Newton meters, watts, kilowatts, megawatts, rads per second, radians, which is different than RPMs. Uh, the information on that, relative physics, game still loading, material properties, and so forth. And that's just the, the this here, the table of contents. But every tool, every device, everything you can make is right in this book. And it's very simple to use. Now we're going to get an achievement for actually doing the research. And again, like I said, the game's still loading in, so it's going to be kind of laggy. Really laggy. There we go. We'll skip over to Reactor Craft. We'll do Electro Craft last. Reactor Craft is taking it to a whole nother level, level. This is going to be all about reactors. Nuclear physics, fission, fusion, power basics, and so forth. And again, everything here is laid out for you with the exception of how to actually physically lay it out in the world, so... And more fireworks. Yay! Knowledge is power. 
Lastly, we have electrical or electrocraft. And again, we have electrical electric physics. So we'll learn you can learn about all that here. Sources and sinks, electric networks and limits. And this is actually the one of the simpler parts because um, there's not much to it. It's basically a machine to take one to take rotational shaft power and convert it into electrical power. And then one to reverse that process. <clears throat> so that is definitely going to be where we're going to be at now. Oddly enough, we're not going to start there. Because one of the first things we need to get a hold of is... Wow. You figured it would load it in by now. One of the things we first need to get into is get a tree farm up and running. It's going to produce us a material in rotary craft that will be very invaluable. So, now, I'm going to make a world save. And this pack is completely custom. You won't find it anywhere. If there's enough viewership and enough demand for it, then we'll to make the to discuss that where it can go, where we can put it at. I prefer the AT launcher. Um, then feed the beast, AT launcher, or even Technic. We'll, we'll put a poll up if if there's enough viewership. So, and I'm still laggy. Really laggy. Hmm, what's going on here? It shouldn't be this laggy. Hmm, weird. Anyway, so, and the real download will have exactly what you see here. This base, and we have some starting materials. Four stacks of wood, four stacks of plank, four stacks of stick, four stacks of charcoal. And down here we have a bunch of clay, three ender pearls, a stack of gunpowder, a few stacks of sand, some stacks of wool, string, and four seared bricks. Now I spawned in a lot of this stuff just to get things started. That's just to help me because getting started takes a lot of time. And I don't want to delay that. I mean it could take me three to four days to generate all that. And same with the smeltery and all that. So we do have a smeltery fully loaded and ready. I don't have any of the Tinker Construct stuff. You'll have to actually build that yourself. So that's one problem. This area here is going to be for something in rotary craft. Anybody who played with it knows what it is. Just like the first episode of the original series, you can see that I've laid out the casting room or the footprint for that. But I also made sure to leave some gaps. So we've got two blocks here and then we've got a three block gap here. Alright, and then of course we've got a lot of open space to play with. Why is that still on? Thank you. I changed the farms. If you remember from the first series, I had five by a uh, large farm with five strips. Well, I've increased these to f uh, five by five blocks for the crystals, and then we're going to do over here generic farming. And I've added a few mods to this because there's some really neat in integration that you can get from Chromaticraft. And I think it even adds in a few extra progresses as well. So, that's a basic layout. And I used uh, the filler from Buildcraft and Creative Mode to flatten this out. That's why you see all the stone and such. And there's some places there's actually minerals sticking out of the ground. Like right here. So, yeah. Alright, let's take a look at the Chromaticraft book. And... Uh, then I'm going to get started here. It's basically the same thing, but for those that are starting here instead of at the beginning, because I am removing the old episodes, um, this is the Chromatic Craft book. It's completely empty when you get it. You have Getting Started in Lexicon, and I won't really read through these for time's sake. On the left, you're going to see two tabs, Items and Recipes. As there's no recipes yet, nothing shows up. On the right we have three tabs. We have Progress, Recovery, and Notebook. The progress is where the magic happens. So each one of these are items that you need to do. For example, Tangible Energy. Crystal Energy is most, mostly an ethereal and tangible force. However, when concentrated, it may have a physical manifestation. Hmm. So I'm, you can take 
kind of gather that you're going to want to look for something like that. Uh, the rolled floor, magical trees, a less than honorable attempt, which this will be my give me. In the villages from the time to time, you're going to discover what looks like a casting room. Sometimes this will look like a house, but it's actually a casting room. And sometimes it looks like a failed attempt at a casting room. In the center will be a, uh, a standard uh, crafting table. If you remove that, you'll find a chest underneath that, and that's how you unlock this. This baffled the daylights out of me. I didn't even think to remove it. And that's the only real big spoiler I'm going to give. Ocean Temples, Orbs of Energy, Monster Slayer, Secret Burrows, Buried Hollows, Sandy Burrows, Energy Beacons, Endless Mobs, this is the first interaction, Crystal Hives, because of Forestry, Technicolor Trees, and Magical Forests. Now you really cannot skip ahead. If we go here you'll see elemental awareness, have no idea what that is, and how to do it. Same with energy internalization, fabrication, evil realm, damaging discharge. Go down even further and it's fully encrypted. And there is a lot of things in this book. The second tab is called recovery. And if you die and your book is lost, destroyed, whatever, all your fragments you've collected will be here, and you'll need paper and ink sacks to get them back. And finally, notebook. If you're not playing with a map mod, you can use this to set out landmarks and stuff so that you can remember, or even X, y, X and Z coordinates, so you can remember how you got there. So, alright. Well, that being said, I'm going to get started. I need to craft up the Tinker Tools stuff and get some stone gathered up. I'm not going to do any gathering from around here. I'll basically be clearing as I go, as I'm needing space and so forth. So, I also need to find a... Oh, I need to mark this. There we go. Base! I need to find a cavern system to start working in. I haven't done that yet. So, We'll get those things done and we'll come back as soon as I got so quite a bit of, well not quite a bit, but enough ore that we can really get started. Like I said, we're even though we're doing rotary craft, we're actually going to start with Mine Factory Reloaded and Immersive Engineering, because we're going to need a tree farm. I mean, that just it has to happen. We have to have a tree farm. We're going to need that for some very specific materials. And plus having infinite uh, charcoal and wood is always nice too. So, alright, what we'll do is we'll come back in just a minute. Okay guys, so we're getting ready to make ourselves the first machine that we're going to need in uh, Rotary Craft. And this is actually a very important machine. We're going to go to Production. And right here it is, the Blast Furnace. It's eight stone bricks and a piece of redstone. Now, there's a lot to read here, and it's worth reading, but I'm going to explain the simple part of it and how to use this. So let's go ahead and craft it. There we go. Ba boom. You're going to need a bucket of lava. You will need a stack of coal, which I don't have. Yeah, I don't have it. <laughs> we'll just do this. And i uh, just give myself a st or take a stack of coal from underground and throw it away. Because, um, yeah... I'm old and I forget stuff. Yay. Okay. You'll need a stack of coal. You're going to need a stack of sand. Or at least some sand. And some gunpowder. That's why I gave me the gunpowder. By the way, I forgot to make the road save before I started all this. So what you guys see here or whatever I finish the episode, that would be what you guys get to start with. Now that's if, like I said... Back to the what I was saying before, that's if there's enough support for the, the idea of making it into a mod pack there. Alright, so I'm going to do is take our lava, drop it here, put a block here, and we'll put this guy here. So this is why I crafted this little nice little room. This will catch fire. You can see it's already building temperature. Now, for this machine to work, or this, yeah, furnace to work, it must have an external fuel source, lava. Eventually, there's something you craft to get the 
temperature even higher, and that's for making bedrock. Right now, we just want to worry about this. And the temperature is going to rise up to 600 degrees before leaving start. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, what? It's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. It's pretty simple. I'm going to put our coal in, sand, gunpowder. Now, the coal is not a fuel. It's actually used in the process of making the ingots. Then we have this area here, which is where you're going to put your iron. Now, if you read the book, by the way, you'll notice the question mark here. You can actually open the book and read it. There's actually a bonus for uh, increasing the number of yield that you get. So, and uh, it does say there, coke slash coal, left slot, gunpowder, bottom left, sand, top left. Whoops, I got that backwards. You go here. There we go. That's how it's supposed to put left, top left, bottom left. So it's 130, 140 C Celsius now. It's climbing pretty quick. So what it was saying was if we fill in, well actually let's do this. If I were just to take a stack of iron and drop it right here, boom, we would get a little bit, there'd be a bit, little bit of a chance of bonus, but not a lot. But if we were to take this and fill this all in, like so, our chances go up greatly. So there we go. And we're just going to let that climb on up to 600 Celsius. It'll rest, I think, 640 or 650 Celsius. And it'll start producing. And the HSLA steel will come out over here. Mind you, guys, that this is not the same steel as what comes from here. So you can't make yourself Coke ovens and all that. And just be good to go. Alright. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to get started by creating an area. For the farm. The first tree farm. Which I'm thinking right here. And I'll get that area voided out. And ready to go. And we're going to do this rotary craft style. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Alright guys. We're back and ready to rock and roll. As it were. So as soon as uh, the steel manufactured, I got an achievement called Steelmaker. We should look. Let's see, that's Blood Magic, Botania. Here we go, Rotary Craft. So Steelmaker unlocks Multiplier, Fortune, Insanity. Then we have Watch Your Step, Step on a Landmine, <laughs> Fermenter, and you see there's quite a bit of achievements here. Nice little progression chart. So. But anyway, what we're going to do is get continue making the items we need. We're going to start in miscellaneous. We're going to want to make these two items. The angular transducer and a screwdriver. So we need a stick, a plank, and HSLA steel. Then three planks, redstone, three HSLA steel. Okay. So let's grab a stick. And... So four planks should be enough. Yeah. All right. These are crafted right here on your regular crafting table. And I'll explain these tools and how they work here in a few minutes. There we go. Screwdriver one. And then the transducer. Back, put that down there. And three HSLA steel. Okay. All right. So. Now that we've got those, we're going to go into production. After the blast furnace, you're going to see the work table. And this is incredibly important. We need to have a work table. It's two HSLA steel, two stone slabs, a crafting table, and a set of brick. So, stone slab. I need to cook a little bit of stone up. Already got brick, so one, two, three. Let's go let that cook. Let's make our brick. So I'm just going to do like that, 16 bricks, because I'm also going to craft something else while we're at it. And that's the alloy furnace. Get that out of the way now. Okay. Should be about done. Now, the work table is incredibly important because that's how you put together all the finished machines. And you want to pay attention with any eye on which, what, what table you need to use. So, there we go. And a crafting table. 
And here I just sat there and said, okay, let's make sure we have all the parts we needed before we open the video back up. That's okay. Won't take any time. Boom. Crafting table. Brick. Two HSLA steel. And finally, stone slabs and a bit of redstone. There's our work table. Okay. I'm going to put that guy right here. And you're going to notice it has this two-sided crafting system. You can put in a uh, coil here for char, I think, to charge, I think it is. Can't exactly remember. It does tell you in here. Recharge. Uh, workbench can also be used to recharge spring-powered tools. So you can put a spring in here, and then you put the tool in, and it recharges it. It also runs off redstone. So to automate it, you need some sort of redstone pulse to create the items. Simply clicking on it will give you the item. So, all right, now we got that. Let's open up and ta start talking about what we're going to build. We're going to build a few machines. We're going to build a couple of engines and a couple of machines. So we're going to start with the engines. The first engine we're going to craft is the DC electric. This little guy here produces 256 rads and 1,024 kilowatts, and it's going to produce four newton meters of torque, and it runs off power red or redstone. It does, has no consumables and no risk at all. Now, even though we have the book, you can use an EI for this. So, it's going to be, where are you? Here you are, DC electric. So we need two base plates, or base panels, two redstone, a shaft unit, and four HSLA steel. Now, to make the uh, shaft units and the base pane panels, you're going to use your standard workbench. And I'm going to do, say, four of these guys. Five of these guys. Okay, there's our base panels. And I'm going to do this again, but we're going to move them here in a moment. Do four of these for now. And just move this up here, like so, and there's your shaft units. So we need a shaft unit. Four HSLA steel. Two base panels. And actually, the, whoop, 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 you see what I'm doing? Wrong crafting table. Because we're assembling. We need two of each, by the way. Okay. And then for the redstone. There you go. And just right click. And see how it, once I put it down, it let me craft it again. So you need some sort of pulse to automate it, like to pull off multiples. So, okay, then we got those guys. We're going to need a few items here, because the next thing we're going to make is the pump. And the pump, which is on the first page here, is two base panels, three liquid pipe, an impaler, two HSLA steel, and a glass pane. And one of these I actually have. There it is. Hello, glass. Okay. Now, to make the pipe, it's simple. It's three glass and then six HSLA. And you get 16 per. Okay, so that's done. Now, on our main crafting table, we're going to make the impaler. And we're going to start with the gears. The HSLA steel, steel gears. we we'll put one here. And then we're going to go like this. Now there's two versions of this pattern. That's the impaler. If you put them in the corners, you get a blade. So there's our impaler. And I believe that's all we needed to make this happen. So let's click on the pump. Hold shift and click, and yes, you can do that. There you go, there's our pump. Now, this pump requires 8 newton, meter, newton meters of torque. These only produce 4. That's why we made 2 of them. We're going to need a way of combining the two together. And to do that, we're going to make a shaft junction, which is 3 shafts, 3 base panels, 2 HSLA steel, and an HSLA steel gear. You get 2 per. Okay, now that we got those, <clears throat> what we're going to do is craft a clutch. And the clutch 
is... Where's the clutch? <clears throat> it's not on the first page, is it? Actually, it might be. Yep, there it is. Clutch is simple. We're going to need a mount, a shaft, and a redstone. Or an HS, a steel shaft and a redstone. To make the mount, we need to come over here. And it's pretty, very simple. 4 HSLA steel plus a base panel gets you the mount. Yeah, so we'll pull all this out. We don't need that anymore. Put that there, that there, and a shaft unit on top, and there's our clutch. Okay, so pump, clutch, we got the pipes. Now we just need to make some shafts. Now before we talk about shaft, make the shaft, let's talk about shafts. If you go to base, uh, table of contents, and then down to shaft load limits, you can read about these. So wood is going to be 278 newton meters at 37, 50, 3577 rads per second. Stone is 958, steel is 6711, and uh, diamond is 69,000, and bedrock's infinitive. We don't want to build a shaft that's like way beyond what we need. So we're going to use wood, and wood shafts are just five wood planks and a sh stick. And I'm going to craft a couple of these, so I'm going to do ten of these and two of these. Okay, so now we can go ahead and shaft, create those, and that, whoops. Is that a, excuse me. Why aren't you taking that? There we go. There you go. Actually, you can right-click even though it doesn't show it and it gave me both. Alright, there we go. Let's hook up our pump first. And then we'll come back and make the other ones. But we'll be out there in just a moment. Let's come back in just a moment. Let me get out to the area and we'll set the pump up. And uh, then we'll make the next machines that we're going to need. Okay, guys. So we're here at the pumping area. This is the tree farm. It's all configured and ready to go. Except for the fact that we don't have any way of making the material or cooking charcoal which we're going to do here now so we're going to set the pump here in the middle you can notice there's two green boxes these green boxes are the input sides for it if they're not the way you want it just simply use your screwdriver and rotate it if you get confused on which sides are which you can use your angular transducer and it will show you on both sides without rotating okay now we got those in place now we're going to need to configure our motors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put motor 1 like you. And you'll see a red box. That's its output. Grab a shaft junction. Like so. And then we're going to use our screwdriver to turn it. So we have two inputs, which are the greens, and one output, which is our red. There we go like so. So this one actually I want to break it off and move it back a couple like so. Okay. I'm trying to think about how this is going to work. Um, so I was thinking I'd put the clutch right here but the problem is I still need to power both sides of this. pop that out. Leave that in place. Let's see what we can get. This will work. Okay. So we'll set one motor here. And we're going to set the other motor here. And I'm hoping that redstone doesn't mess with that capacitor. Next we'll do is need to set our clutch down. Remember green is input, red is output. And then finally a wood shaft. Oops. There we go. Like so. Hmm.
this is why I actually have built the, uh, whatchamacallit, um, the bluestone wire. Because again, that's going to be a problem right there. This will be a problem. We don't want this interfering because this needs a uh, lever to control it. Oh, okay. Um, trying to think of how I want to do this. Well, let's take it all out and do it again. Just move it around. I kind of wanted to keep it over here in case I want to expand that road out, but I'm guessing we're not going to do that. The outputs are on that side, yeah? Yeah, okay. So we'll put shaft junction here, which is correct on the angle. We'll put DC motor one here. and DC motor to here. Then we'll put our clutch here and our red shaft, our uh, shaft here. Okay, take that torch out. All right, so let's grab our torch, our redstone torch, our lever. And then what we're going to do is put you here. And I'll need some redstone. Okay, that's not turning. Good. There we go. That one is turning. So you notice the clutch is not turning. Put our lever down, and then we'll throw that. And now both sides are turning. If we use our angular transducer, it's going to give us some information. It says that... Oh, it just says it's being received. This is new. It used to tell you what the speed was. Hmm. Let's hook up the wood shaft. Now, the reason I put the clutch in, there we go, we're pumping water. The reason you put the clutch in is because these motors, even though you're hooked up on redstone, they don't exactly start at the same time, so you want them to both achieve maximum speed. Now, let's see if you tell me. So this is now receiving 2,048 kilowatts of power at 256 rads. If you divide 2048 by 256, you come up with four. Cool. All right. So let's take this and we're gonna route our pipe downstairs through this hole. Okay. There we go, like so. Oops. There we go. And there we go. All right. So why don't we come back in just a moment while I get back upstairs and get ready for our next machine. Okay, guys, we're back. Now what we're going to do is make our next motor, which is this guy, the steam generator. It requires three cobblestone, a condenser, and a paler shaft unit. Base panels, you can do it with gold or even copper, which I happen to have some copper right here one piece actually wow perfect now to build the condenser we're going to need five hsla steel and four liquid pipes which we don't have enough liquid pipes to do so craft up a bit more of those and this is a crafting table recipe as you can see it doesn't show us the other so there we go get two condensers per clear that out we'll make another impaler there's that and we got three cobblestone I believe that's all we need yep we should be good to go oh wrong machine if you try to shift click it on the regular table it won't work and it still won't work here why what are we missing? No, we're good. So maybe this doesn't want to shift click. Condenser. 
impeller, three cobble, two base panels, and what was the other item? Oh, the copper. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Cool. Next, we're going to need... Um, we got wood shafts. We're good there. We don't need any more of those. Next thing we need to do is craft something called a bevel. A uh, corner... Uh, bevel gears. Right here. These are going to allow us to make corners. And it's going to be a HSLA steel gear. Five base panels, two shafts, and a steel ingot. So let's make... Oops. Don't need those. I need these. There we go. Steel gears. Okay. And you get four of these per. And again, it's not going to let me uh, shift-click them in. Whatever reason. Oh, it's, I don't have enough base panels. That's why. Okay. And there we go. Perfect. Last thing we need to make is the frictional grinder. Now this thing is awesome. Should have enough for that now. To make it, we're going to need... Where is it? Ah, here it is. Frictional heater. Three steel, two base panels, two shaft units. Let's see if this will let me shift click it. Yay! And uh, you know what? I almost forgot something very important. We do need, there's one more thing that we need. Otherwise we're going to be picking up pieces. Let's see here. There we go. Getting low. And that's going to be the heat sinks. The cooling vent right here. Which is six shaft units or three base panels or six copper plus 310. We'll do the other because we already have it. And you get three per. And all I had enough was for three, apparently. I'd like to have two sets if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we've got our heat steam generator, bevel gears, friction heater, and so forth. Why don't we come back in just a moment once we're all set up out there at the uh, farm. Alright guys, <clears throat> running a little bit behind again, but that's okay. We're almost done. Um, yep, okay. So, what you're going to do is set this thing up. It needs water to run. You're going to pipe that in through the back. As you can see, it's connected and it's full. And it has 1 hour 30 minutes of fuel time, water time. Now since we're supplying it from the pumps upstairs, it will always have it. And then we're of course hanging out. Now we'll explain why I have this in just a moment. What we need to do is get back here. So we can go ahead and route the shafts. Now that we're here at this corner, what we're going to do is grab our corner bezel. bezel pop that down. You'll see red and green. We're going to do these each uh, one at a time. So, uh, no, 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 no screwdriver. The screwdriver actually will let you see which way is which, but you can't configure it. So what you need to do is just with an empty hand, select. Now this is based on aim uh, direction. So we're coming from the north, input north, and we're going to be outputting to the west. So output on the west. North and west. Give it a bop. And now you see there you go. And there you go. Do this again. And we're going to be going from the west to the north. I'm sorry, I mean the east, not the west. There we go. And now we can see that it's properly configured. Next, we're going to grab, bring a frictional heater in. 
it's going to connect right up and I may have a problem um, we'll see maybe I can do this like this maybe this can be done like this okay so next we need a furnace attach that on the front and let's configure this so we're going to be inputting on the top outputting from the front of the machine and that's going to take care of our charcoal problems now let's grab our lava first let's do a reset here we're going to need our fins and we need a bucket of lava and something to cover the hole up there we go and there we go now this thing's generating its heat once they think it hits 100 celsius it'll kick on when it does we're going to want to put a cooling fin on it and monitor temperature so should kick on i think at 100 celsius in addition you can also use your angular transducer to monitor temperature There we go. It's still climbing, so I'm going to go ahead and drop another one in. Right here on the side. And that's going to hold down the temperatures. Now over here we need to do the same thing. We need to attach fins to both sides of this. Oh, come on. Really? Thank you. No. There we go. And that should hold down the temperature. Let's grab our angular transducer. There we go. And let's see what our temperature is. So I can't tell. Oh, the frictional heater. It's 563 Celsius, but it's holding right there. Oops. Now, if this thing does get overheated, it will explode. Oh, there it is. Connect that back up. There we go. So those are running at 22, 23 Celsius each. Can't tell the other one. You can see it is charged. And just going to monitor temperature one more time. It's still holding at 563. So let's go ahead and toss in our oak saplings. And for now, I think what I want to do is just leave. Am I catching on? Oh. Yeah, I want to leave the sides around this thing open just for the moment to see how it does. Now, I know we're running real long, and I said I was going to be cutting down my video times, but you yeah, remember I did open up with a nice speech, and that took a little while, so. We'll be okay. Next episode will be right on schedule. I'm going to spawn in a bit of bone meal just so we can see if this thing is working properly. There it goes. Come downstairs. And. Gosh, you can't even see it. It's going so fast. Um. Wait, is it the bottom side? Up oh, there's the XP. Wait, is it the bottom that needs it? It received through the top. That's always active. 
<sighs> the only problem I have with vanilla furnaces is trying to figure out which side is which. I thought that you can output through the front of the furnace. Input is the top, but I thought output was through the front. And everything here is all configured correctly. Yep, we're all configured up here, so it should be inserting right into there, and it's not for some reason. Hmm. If I have to, worst comes to worst, I'll just uh, break this and bend it out one and then rotate it back into position. And then we can have the move the conduit down. There we go. Oh, it's burning oak sapling now. And I'll need to configure a filter for this because you can see that it's doing the wrong thing. Let's break that and pull these guys out for the moment. Stop cooking. <clears throat> because I'm going to need to configure, reconfigure the whole thing. But I'll do that off camera. But essentially, this is the setup method on it and how you want to do it. And you can see back here, this thing is was cooled down, and this is cooling down too. So, And I'll just have to rearrange this whole thing a little bit better. Um, but for now, though, this is Mr. Simple Majority signing off. I hope you all enjoyed the episode. Between this episode and next episode, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to plant cannoli. I'm probably going to make another water mill assembly because I'm going to automate the cannoli. That way I don't have to worry about it. I'm also going to go out and do a chromatic craft exploration. As I really haven't done too much in the way of that yet. If you look at my map, I spawned up here, made my way down to here. And this is basically all I've seen of the world. So I'm going to get out there and do some more exploration and unlock what I can and where I can. So we'll come back next time. We're going to be really working in Chromatic Craft, because I'm not Chromatic Craft, but uh, Rotary Craft. But we'll be doing Chromatic Craft as well. Until then, see y'all later.